Paramount got involved with Dumont in the, I've forgotten the year, but as a result of Dumont needing money to build the manufacturing plants in New Jersey, um, Paramount was approached as a potential investor or uh, a lender of capital to Dumont for that purpose. Uh, Dr. Dumont had his eye on a, uh, what had been a pickle factory in Clifton, New Jersey, that he wanted to convert into a tube manufacturing facility. And he needed the money to, to buy the fact, buy the building. And uh, Mort Lowy, who had joined Dumont, had come out of Wall Street, had been a broker in Wall Street, and was at that time, uh, or later on, became the head of the broadcast division, interestingly enough. He was the first one before Lawrence Phillips, who I mentioned before, who preceded Chris Whitting, um, went to Paramount and they agreed to lend Dumont a nominal amount, like $225,000 to buy this factory. Dumont thought that they were investing in his company, but it turned out to be a loan that had to be repaid, and he bought the factory. And uh, they got, as a result, 26% of the Dumont stock. Dumont issued what they call B stock, and Paramount took all of that stock, uh, for which they didn't pay a dime. They just lent this money to Dumont and they became uh, a substantial stockholder in Dumont as a result of making the loan. Now, how do you know this backstory? Did, did Dumont tell you? Uh, Dumont told me, Mort, Mort Lowy told me. You know, they were all still there when I was there. And do you think Paramount's involvement with Dumont uh, helped it more than it hindered it, or the other way around? Oh, it hurt it. Uh, they also got, as a result of their stock holding, three positions on the board of directors of Dumont. Um, Barney Balaban, who was chairman of the board of Paramount, went on the Dumont board. Ed Weisel, who was general counsel to Paramount, went on the board. And Bernie Goodwin, who was secretary of Paramount, secretary of the corporation, went on the Dumont board. And it did what I later learned, created a bifurcated board in which they threw every possible uh, roadblock in, in, uh, to Dumont's progress that they did. We never knew why, except the only thing we could figure was they were so worried about their motion picture business that they wanted to stop television from progressing. And they did things like Dumont needed more money in order to uh, buy another plant. And he went out and contacted various banks who would naturally go to Paramount and ask them about the uh, uh, validity of this loan and the company that was requesting it, and they would uh, in one case, they, Dumont got a direct quote. He told me about this himself. He said, lend money to that crazy scientist, you're out of your mind. And they caused one possible loan after another to go down the drain because they would derogate the Dumont operation. So Paramount was saying this to potential uh, people who would loan money. Yeah, they would step in and stop uh, Dumont's ability to get a loan. And Dumont never did get a loan and built the entire company out of operating monies, 
which is, is incomprehensible. No company ever does that. Until ABC um, was bought by United Paramount Theaters, which was a spin-off from Paramount Pictures, uh, ABC was going nowhere. We had as much billing going for Dumont revenue as ABC did, and we had better programming and better clearances than ABC had. But when United Paramount Theaters bought uh, ABC from Ed Noble of the Lifesaver Company in Chicago, um, they immediately infused about $35 million in capital into ABC programming. And the man, Leonard Goldenson, uh, who had been uh, Barney Balaban's appointee to run the theaters and was now away from Barney Balaban and Paramount Theaters, had all these connections in Hollywood, which he immediately started to exploit for ABC programming. For instance, uh, he went to uh, Jack Warner and had Warner do uh, several hours of programming, Cheyenne, um, Hawaii Five-0, several of those shows came from, from Warner Brothers at Goldenson's request to help ABC. And that ran, uh, that kind of competition spelled the death knell for Dumont. In addition, Dumont was unable to buy or to create two additional stations. They were entitled to five stations under the FCC ruling. But because Paramount was a big stockholder and owned stations in Chicago and Los Angeles, WBKB in Chicago, KTLA in, in Los Angeles, they were considered part of Dumont, which they weren't. We weren't even affiliated with them. Uh, so the FCC wouldn't allow Dumont to have its full complement of five owned and operated VHF stations. Did those stations run Dumont programs? KTLA yeah. and never. never so it was just it. absurd that... Uh, Pardon? So it was sort of absurd that, that yeah. anyone would think they were associated. As a matter of fact, uh, I don't think Paramount even liked owning stations, you know, because they were so worried about their motion picture business and what television would do to it. 